we humans have had a massive negative effect on the planet and its many beautiful ecosystems. But thankfully there are some animals that have learnt to adapt to our destruction. Some animals will change their behaviour to better suit a human dominated world, whereas some animals even benefit from human activity. And in some rare cases, animals have actually evolved to avoid human persecution. In today's video, I'll be going through just a few of these interesting stories, and we'll start off with a very large and mysterious owl. The barred owl is one of the largest species of owl in North America, and it's native to the eastern part of the continent. Even though some describe this owl's coloration as drab, it helps it to perfectly blend into its environment, and this means that prey don't usually spot them until it's too late. The barred owl has a few subspecies across its range, and these subspecies differ in shape, size, and coloration. Most of these owls have a maximum wingspan of around 1.25 meters, and they can reach a maximum weight of around a kilogram. This size means that they can target a wide range of creatures, with small mammals, amphibians, reptiles and even birds being on the menu. These mysterious birds have a wide range of distinctive calls, and some of these calls can sound like human vocalisations or even sentences. As I previously mentioned, the barred owl is native to the eastern United States, but in recent years it's been expanding its range westward. It's believed that this expansion is both caused by and made possible by humans, as we have caused them to seek out new lands and we've made it possible for them to overcome a formidable barrier. The barred owl is preyed upon by mammals such as weasels and raccoons, and they are also targeted by the larger, more aggressive great horned owl. If this wasn't enough, they are also negatively affected by logging, rodent poisoning and vehicle collisions, so it's easy to understand why they would want to find new, safer habitats. Their expansion westward has been described as natural, but some argue that they would not be able to expand their range without the help of humans. The Great Plains was the natural barrier that stopped the barred owls from moving west, but thanks to human settlement, deer and elk over harvest, and the disappearance of bison and beavers in some areas, they have been able to cross over to the new western habitats. The lack of trees was one of the main reasons why they were not able to cross the Great Plains in the past, but the modern day Great Plains are very different to how they were a few hundred years ago. This expansion may seem like a positive event at first, but it has had a massive negative effect on another native owl. The spotted owl is in the same genus as the barred owl, and for some it's easy to confuse the two species. Both owls live very similar lives to one another, but the spotted owl is smaller and less aggressive. This means that when both the barred owl and the spotted owl inhabit the same area, the spotted owl loses out, and this has led to massive declines in spotted owl numbers. If this wasn't bad enough, the barred owls are also known to hybridize with the spotted owls, creating sparred owls or botted owls. This also negatively affects the spotted owl's numbers, and today they are in real danger. The barred owl's expansion has led to certain spotted owl subspecies being listed as endangered, and extreme measures are being taken to try and help the smaller owls. Hunters have been encouraged to shoot the barred owls, but this could lead to even more problems, as some hunters could misidentify native owls as barred owls. Recently, the US Fish and Wildlife Service have released a final proposal to kill around 450,000 barred owls, and they have been described as invasive by some experts. This is of course a very controversial claim, as most people envisage invasive species as animals coming from distant lands and causing problems in native ecosystems, and not native animals that have expanded their range and have affected other native species. Some believe that nature should be left to run its course as it was only a matter of time before the barred owls would move west, whereas others believe that we should help the spotted owls as it's our fault that they are in peril today. Personally, I'm not sure what to think about this situation as I understand both sides, and there doesn't seem to be an easy solution. If you cull the barred owls, it may help the spotted owl in the short term, but there's no evidence to suggest that the barred owls won't eventually bounce back and become just as big a problem in a few decades. The outrageous amount of culling and overharvesting in our history has directly led to problems such as this today, and further culling may cause more unforeseen problems down the line. 
I think finding new habitats where the spotted owl can thrive away from the barred owl may be the best solution, as culling is only usually a temporary solution, and it causes a lot of unnecessary suffering. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments down below, as this is a very complicated and controversial issue. Cougars are among the most adaptable cats in the world, and this is part of the reason why they can be found over such a large area. They can be found over large portions of both North and South America, and across their range they have many different subspecies and names. Their diet, behaviour and size varies greatly across the Americas, but they are usually near the top of the food chain, with only the largest, most aggressive predators causing them problems. Even though a fully grown cougar could easily prey on humans, they rarely do so and tend to focus on easier, more conventional prey. Since the year 2000, only six people have been killed by cougars in the US, and it seems as though cougars have chosen to avoid humans altogether. Depending on where they are found, cougars are known to be both diurnal and nocturnal. Cougars in the Brazilian Pantanal are known for being mostly diurnal, but they are crepuscular and nocturnal in eastern South America. The cougars in California are known for being mostly crepuscular, meaning that they are most active in the twilight hours, but studies have shown that they are adapting to human activity and becoming more nocturnal. In the greater Los Angeles area, lots of hiking and cycle tracks carve through cougar habitats. This means that cougars often run into humans, but most of the time the humans are unaware that they are there. Even though a fully grown cougar could take down a human, they would much rather avoid humans and in some cases they see humans as a threat. A study in 2019 found that even the sound of humans talking can be enough to scare off cougars, and this fear may have been caused by historic persecution. This is especially the case for mothers with cubs, and to avoid humans they have changed the hours that they are most active. Most hikers and cyclists are most active at dawn and dusk in the cougar's habitat, so they have adapted to have a more nocturnal lifestyle. Strangely, this is not a behavioural adaptation that's unique to the cougar, as studies have shown that many different animals that live near humans are more nocturnal than their counterparts that live in wilder areas. In some ways, it's quite upsetting that so many animals have to change the way they've lived for thousands of years because of humans. But on the other hand, it shows that these animals are able to adapt, and maybe there's hope that they can successfully coexist with humans in the future. African elephants are some of the animals that have been worst affected by human dominance, as famously they have been relentlessly poached for their tusks. Today there are two different African elephant species, the African bush elephant and the African forest elephant. These elephants are listed as endangered and critically endangered, and this is almost entirely down to poaching and human wildlife conflict. The demand for ivory comes from the Asian market, where it's seen as a status symbol and it's used to make ornaments. It's estimated that the ivory trade is worth 23 billion US dollars each year, and the demand for ivory leads to around 20,000 African elephants being killed each year. Even though we are battling against poaching and the ivory and horn trade, in some areas it's a losing battle, and it could eventually lead to extinctions. As the elephants become rarer, the price for ivory goes up, and this means that the poachers are willing to take more risks. One of the other threats that the African elephants face is human wildlife conflict, as in many areas across Africa, elephants are in conflict with humans over resources. This conflict can lead to fatalities on both sides, and it's a conflict without an easy solution. If an African elephant manages to survive a poacher attack in its lifetime, then it's more likely to become aggressive towards humans because of its experience. This can make the human-elephant conflict even worse, and this is bad news for the survival of the African elephant species. Finding an effective solution to human-elephant conflict in Africa is extremely difficult as it's such a complicated issue, but the elephants have started to adapt to the poaching threat. Instead of changing their behaviour like the cougar, the African elephants have started to rapidly evolve. 
as I'm sure many of you already know. Natural selection is a process that explains how organisms with traits that are better suited to their environment are more likely to survive and reproduce. The large African elephants with giant tusks are normally the first elephants that poachers will target, and they are less likely to take the risk on an elephant with smaller tusks, because the risk isn't worth the reward. This means that the elephants with smaller tusks are able to pass on their genes, while the elephants with the larger tusks are killed, and this means that there are more elephants with small tusks today. This is a rather tragic form of rapid evolution, and some elephants have even evolved to be tuskless. Female elephants in a national park in Mozambique are frequently born without tusks, and this is a direct consequence of rampant poaching. During the civil war in the area from 1977 to 1992, elephants with large tusks were often hunted to fund the fighting. This led to the tuskless elephants surviving and passing on their genes, and this is why there are so many tuskless elephants in Mozambique today. This is arguably the most tragic example in this video, as we humans have forced the largest land animals on this planet to lose their most iconic features. Unfortunately, this form of rapid evolution is not unique to elephants, as rhinos are evolving to have smaller horns due to poaching. Hopefully, we can find better ways to combat poaching in the future, as it would be a real shame if even more animals lose their most iconic features. Humans and bears have quite a complicated history with one another, as they have been completely eradicated in some areas, but we have learnt to live alongside them in others. Because they are potentially deadly animals, they are often eradicated by humans, and this is exactly what happened in North America. Brown bears used to be found much further south, but today they are mostly found in the northern states and Canada. This has directly affected the North American ecosystem, as their eradication has allowed other species such as coyotes to thrive in their absence. It's a similar story over in Europe, as famously there have been no bears in the United Kingdom for over a thousand years. But at one point in time, bears from Scotland were used in the Colosseum, as they were thought to be the most ferocious bears in the Roman Empire. Bears that are seen as less of a threat are not persecuted to the same level, which is part of the reason why American black bears are found over such a larger area, and their population is thought to be twice that of all other bear species combined. Even though some people see bears as hypercarnivorous predators, meat only makes up part of their diet with the rest being made up of plant matter. The amount of meat a bear eats differs from species to species, and it also depends on the area in which they're found. Meat makes up around 51% of a brown bear's diet in Yellowstone National Park, but only around 11% of a brown bear's diet in the Glacier National Park is made up of meat. Human dominance has had a mostly negative effect on bear numbers worldwide, but some bears have learnt to adapt to live alongside humans, and some even take advantage of our abundance of food. Just like the cougars, some brown bear populations have started to become more nocturnal to avoid humans, and under the cover of darkness they will invade human inhabited areas, and they will feast on the food that we leave behind or leave unguarded. Black bears are more likely to raid human areas in search of food, and they will target anything from trash cans, landfill sites, and farms. In some areas, human food can make up as much as 30% of a black bear's diet, and this obviously has a negative effect on the bears. It should be no surprise to hear that human food isn't the healthiest, and this is especially the case for the food that we throw away. Studies have shown that black bears that eat more human food hibernate less, and their cells age more quickly. This behaviour could lead to more black bears roaming the streets at night, and it could also lead to more unhealthy black bear populations. Of course, you should never willingly feed a wild bear if you see one, as you are not only putting the bear's life at risk, but you are also risking the lives of other people. The saying, a fed bear is a dead bear rings true, because if you feed a bear, it's likely to associate humans with food, and this means that it's more likely to approach humans, which could lead to attacks and the bear being shot to save the lives of humans. Feeding a bear is an incredibly selfish and stupid thing to do, but sometimes they don't even need to be enticed to enter remote towns. 
In 2019, a group of polar bears took over a Russian town, and this was after they had been struggling to find food and descended on the town in desperation. Unfortunately, cases such as this could become more frequent in the future, and this could eventually lead to fatal attacks. Hopefully, we can find an effective way to coexist with bears in the future, but for now, this remains a very complicated issue. If you think that there are any other stories that I should have included in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But that's it for now, and until next time, goodbye.